following cleaning of the skin, the dimensions of the abscess, its fluctuance, and the point most suitable for incision are defined and assessed using palpation. To anaesthetize the skin overlying the abscess, a number of local anaesthetic techniques can be employed. Here, intradermal infiltration of local anaesthetic solution is demonstrated using 1 to 2 milliliters of 1% lidocaine solution. The dermis overlying the roof of the abscess cavity is infiltrated with local anaesthetic solution. Care must be taken to infiltrate only at the level of the dermis, as direct infiltration into the abscess cavity risks tracking of infection and hydrodissection of tissue planes. The dermis of the skin overlying the most prominent part of the abscess, or the site of maximal tension, is first carefully incised. In this case, an elliptical incision is performed. The roof of the abscess cavity is then punctured by advancing the blade deeper. Depending upon the size and shape of the abscess, a number of types of incision, including simple stab or linear incisions, can be placed. Using forceps, the roof of the abscess cavity is excised. The defect created should be large enough so as to allow the abscess to drain completely of purulence and prevent premature wound closure. The abscess is drained by manually expressing the pus within the abscess cavity, in this example using two gauze swabs. If indicated, pus can be collected and sent for microbial culture. If underlying malignancy is suspected, biopsy of the abscess wall or overlying skin can be performed. Provided that there is no suspicion of a foreign body causing the abscess, a gloved finger can be introduced to the cavity to assess the depth and break up any loculations. An instrument, such as a hemostat, can also be used to do this. All areas of the abscess cavity are checked to ensure that all loculations are broken up and to permit proper drainage. The abscess cavity is then copiously irrigated using normal saline solution to ensure all debris and visible pus is removed. If indicated, placement of a drain can be considered to ensure continued drainage and prevent early closure of the wound. If indicated, the irrigated cavity can be packed with a suitable material to prevent the wound margins from closing prematurely and to afford continued drainage. If more comprehensive drainage is indicated, the incision can be extended. Here, a cruciate incision is made using scissors by placing two cuts perpendicular to the margins of the original incision. The corners are then trimmed, as this will permit better drainage and, if left, the corners may necrose and delay wound healing. Additional sluffy or pyogenic tissue within or forming the abscess cavity can also be removed. The wound is again irrigated using normal saline solution to ensure that all debris and visible pus is removed. An absorbent wetted gauze dressing should then be applied to cover the wound, which should be checked and the dressing changed at regular intervals.